Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at one verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. The Bible says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The title of the message is, simple one, Overcoming Life's Challenges. Overcoming Life's Challenges. And this is a great verse. And verse that we all should memorize. If God be for us, who can be against us? And as Apostle Paul writes about you know, believers. And just like a couple of verses up, Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. It's a life verse for many brethren, including myself. That's, you know, it's like my favorite verse in the Bible. Everything that happens in your life, according to Romans 8, 28, is good for according to his purpose. Whether you're going through the hardships, whether you're going through the good times, whether you're going through down times, whether you're sad, whether you're going through physical infirmities, whether you're going through the financial hardships, everything works for good to them that love God, who are the call according to his purpose. And our life's challenges come at you almost every day. If you have children, your children could be a challenge. If you have schoolwork, it could, it's definitely a challenge. Work, it could be a challenge. You know, your boss, your coworkers, your direct reports, everybody could be a challenge. In Southern California, even with pandemic, traffic is still a challenge. You know, many places, it gets really, really you know, crowded still. So a challenge is something that goes hand in hand with your life. However, there are very few who can overcome challenge like the Bible believers can, like the Christians can. So many people cannot overcome challenge because they rely on everything other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So in order for you to overcome life's challenge, number one, you have to get saved. Whether you are here, whether you are somewhere in the you know, other side of the country or world listening to this message, in order for you to overcome life's challenge, you have to get saved. We're not talking about getting saved from pandemic. We're not talking about getting saved from your work or school. We're talking about getting saved from hell once and for all. Many of you sitting here have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So you have overcome that death, right? Eternal lake in fire. However, for those who haven't, just like you know, our little brother, you know, Sean was saying, you have to trust Jesus Christ and Him alone. Trust His precious blood to save. I mean, wash away your sins once and for all, and accept Him not in your life, because everybody says, "I have God in my life. I have Jesus in life." No, you accept Him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Then you'll have eternal life, and you can definitely overcome life's challenges. Why? Let's turn our Bibles to Philippians chapter four. We're going to look at a few verses today. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. When you're in Christ, you can, just like the verse says, you can overcome life's challenges. If you're not, you know, you're in a very, very precarious, dangerous place. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Where do you find your strength? Is it your spouse? Not that it's wrong. Is it your dog? I mean, not that it's wrong. Is it your school, your friends, your TV show, favorite movie, favorite music? No, you find strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you feel weak, you ask yourself, Am I doing Philippians 4.13? Am I finding strength in Christ each day? Am I finding strength 
in Christ this morning. Because a lot of times, you know, devil will do anything he can to distract you from focusing and serving God. And especially inside the church. Isn't it amazing how you are wide awake when you're doing regular stuff or even fun stuff or when you're meeting with friends or people that you like to mingle with? But when it comes to church time, you know, I'm guilty of it as well. Suddenly, you feel tired. Suddenly, your eyes get droopy and sleepy. And suddenly, your mind wanders. And suddenly, you know, you're daydreaming. And suddenly, before you know it, preaching has ended. Or you're thinking to yourself, how long is this going to take? When will it end? We're only on point one when they're like 10 point. You know, you think like that. Or you're singing the hymns. When you're, I mean, God forbid that if, if any one of us are listening to worldly music, right? And singing to it. I mean, if you're listening to worldly pop music or you know, K-pop, which has become popular, or any other, and then you start singing loud in the car or at home, you know, you start shaking your head or your body, you have all this energy. However, when it comes to singing hymns, for some, I don't know, energy is just completely drained. It's like you're singing with your last drop of blood or energy, or like you, you, you haven't had Gatorade or Powerade for a long time. So you are just struggling. Why? You know why? Because you are not getting strength through Jesus Christ. If you are trying to do worldly stuff, you know, you'll get a lot of strength. Your flesh would love to do worldly stuff. Whether it's going to places, doing things, watching things. However, when you're trying to do spiritual stuff without being filled with the Holy Ghost, with the strength from the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't do it. You can't do it as well. Why? Because your flesh hates you. Your flesh doesn't want to do anything spiritual. Your flesh wants to do anything that's against the Word of God, against Lord Jesus Christ. But that's just inevitable until, you know, we get rapture, until you die, you know, our you know, body and soul separates once and for all. Until then, you know, day of redemption, you're not going to actually have that happen to you. You have to live with your flesh. Then, you know, Dr. Ruckman used to have illustration, you know, there's a white dog and there's a black dog, right? Well, I'm going to stop right there with uh, everything going on. But when you feed, when you feed your spiritual side, it will definitely grow. But when you feed your fleshly side, what happens? It's going to grow as well. When your flesh side is stronger than your flesh, I mean, spiritual side, most definitely you're not going to be living in a spiritual state. You're not going to be living for God. You're not going to be witnessing you're not going to be reading your Bible. You're not going to be praying. And you're not even going to be praying for, especially for others. You just be selfish person, always thinking about yourself. Think about your flesh. Thinking about no one else but you and you and you alone. And it's sad. Why? Because some of you have family, but you only look at yourself, right? Even though you have your you know, lovely spouse, you have your lovely children, you have family members, but because you let your flesh control you, only thing you could think about is you. Think about today. What was the first thought that come to your mind today? If you remember, what were some of the early thoughts that you thought about today? Was it how you were gonna look at the church? Was it people you're gonna meet at the church? Was it traffic? What was it? Was it godly things? Was it something about Christ? Was it something about prayer? Was it something about, you know, your loved ones who's not saved or who's going through the hard times? Or our, you know, you know, pastor who's going through, you know, physical ailments? Or was it always about you? You know, it's, it's common. It's not like you're different from other people. That's how everybody else thinks. But you should think different as a saved Bible believer, so-called, right? You, know, you and I call ourselves Bible believers because we believe every word of God. We believe in the perfect King James Bible. 
But many times, you and I, our life does not show Christ. And it was good to hear Brother Nathan's you know, testimony. And I believe, you know, Brother Nathan, as I know him, you know, throughout the years, you know, he, I guess, walks the talk. But I don't know about rest of us. At church, we say, you know what? We love the Word of God. We want to do everything that Bible says. But outside the church, do you actually, you know, walk the talk? As they say, does your life show Christ? Without it, how are you ever going to overcome challenges? You and I are already marked by the devil. Devil hates you. You're on your way to heaven. He's on his way to hell. Devil doesn't want to see anybody else goes to heaven. So he's going to do whatever he can to destroy you, destroy your testimony, destroy your marriage, destroy, you know, your relationship with your children, destroy your relations with your workers, co-workers, anybody. Just completely try to mess your life around. And for some of you, you're going through that challenge right now, whether it's family, whether it's at work, or whether it's anything else. Why? Devil will not, sit stand, uh, devil will not stand still until, you know, he defeats you completely. That's why if, like the Bible says, all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you do not suffer any type of persecution in your life, you should really check your Christian odometer or Christian life. Obviously, you're not really living the way that God wants, but you're living the way that devil wants. That's why devil's not bothering you. I mean, it's like, okay, that person's already doing whatever I want he or she to do, why would I bother? But if that person is, you know, fired up, you know, witnessing to everybody, you know, trying to take my children away, you know, from the eternal lake of fire, I'm going to do something about it. Then you could actually look at your Christian life. You could look at your spiritual state. You could kind of measure. Is anything happening in my life when it comes to, you know, spiritual things? Even little things, right? I mean, John Wesley, one of the you know, greatest Christians, you know, I shared this story many times. You know, he, he, he didn't get persecution for a while. So he got off his horse and you know, knelt down and prayed, Lord, you know, show me something if I'm still doing your work. And then someone threw the rock right next to him. I mean, that, I mean we're talking about John Wesley who's considered one of the greatest Christians after Apostle Paul, who lived as a holy life as human being can. If that person has that kind of heart, and that person has that kind of desire to serve the Lord, and that person who believes in the Word of God is spiritually wide open, eyes are wide open, where things should be happening and always are you know, aware of it, then you should be doing the same thing. If nothing's happening in your Christian life, I mean, forget about overcoming challenges, right? You've already been defeated with a lot of things. You and I don't even have to have a deep conversation. By your experience, by my experience, we know what the up and downs of our Christian lives, lives are. We've been to the high in the mountains. We've been to the bottom in the valleys. You know when you're backslidden, most of you, some people don't, but most of you, and you know when you are closer to the Lord. Anybody, any preacher from Dr. Ruckman to, you know, Pastor Shrive, Pastor Kim, everybody, you know, what determines your Christian life is what? You know, your personal relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. How, closer, how close you are to Him determines what kind of Christian life you have. And today, this morning, you and I have to ask ourselves. I mean, are we actually really having a close relationship with Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it just a person that we trusted for our salvation was hot for a little bit and he's put on wayside, like in the attic, in a basement, and we haven't 
you know, really dealt with him, visited him, or prayed to him, or talked to him, or read about him, or read his message, or anything. 99% of Christians, based on, you know, experience, right? It's not even like 2080 rule, like in the past, where 20% of the congregation does like 80% of the work, or 1090. It's come down to like 595 or 199. That's how, you know, people have backslidden. That's how people no longer have desire to serve the Lord with the things of the world. Right? Pandemic, for example. And people are always thinking about pandemic, pandemic, worrying about pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. You know, let God take care of it. You don't have to worry about it as long as you know you do what you need to do. It's out of your control. You let God take care of it. As a Christian, as a Bible believer, you, know, you shouldn't be, you know, always looking towards, you know, like, where's the stimulus? Where's the stimulus, right? Like, you know, general population, right? You know, politics, everything. You know, we pray that, you know, more God-fearing people are in the office. But if God's will is not, then you move on and you go on with your life and you do what you can as a Christian in your own local church, in your community, at your home, at your family gatherings, and try to win as many people to the Lord. Then you could actually find strength in Christ. For some, it's like a ambiguous, like a cryptic, like a question or ununderstandable term. You know why? Because you haven't put your strength, you haven't put your trust, you haven't put all of yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ. All your life decision, if it's surrounded and if it's made based on Jesus Christ, then you will find strength. However, if your life decisions are based on your own greed, your own lust, and your own pleasure, forget about finding strength in the Lord. I mean, it's like oil and water. You know? It's not going to mingle. Then it's up to you to think about, hey, it's time for me to judge myself. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Some of the things that, you know, you lack, I lack, the you know, Bible definitely lets us know about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Just like 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You have to judge yourself each day, each moment. Each night. You and I have to like confess our sins. We're not, you know, it's not, we're, it's not like confessing your sins to a priest, right? No. In a personal relationship, you're confessing your sins to God. When you have something blocking you from receiving a perfect blessing or having that peace, you know, a lot of times that's called sin. And that sin if you do not judge yourselves, if you do not confess your sins and repent and turn away from those sins, you will never overcome life's challenges. How can you as a saved Christian, if Lord resides in you, right? You're one with the Lord. And He's so pure. Again, Brother Nathan said He's so perfect. And you accept Him in your heart, your Lord and Savior. If you're not getting rid of your sin, if you're not confessing your sins, it can't work. Why? It's because if you are trying to work a machine, and if there's some screw went in there, and it's stopping the gears from turning, it's not going to work. It stops, especially people who work in construction or you know, utilities. But you take that out, it's, they call it like well-oiled machine, right? It turns. Like your Christian life is not turning. Like those sins are stopping. 
It's like stuck at that gear. And then you know it too. Because he wants to turn. Because Holy Spirit is, you know, convicting you. You know, stop, stop, get rid of that sin, you know. Stop it. No more. He wants to turn. They can't. Your flesh, your desire, and your sinful nature, and your selfishness and pride is too, I guess, overwhelming. And you can't turn. However, great thing about, you know, our great Savior and Lord, great thing about our God is that He's God of many, many chances. You can't get right with the Lord. I mean, you can't get right with the Lord right now. You do not want to put it off. That's one thing. You and I know we love to procrastinate. You know? We're lazy many times. That's why even with spiritual stuff, or should I say, especially with spiritual stuff, you put it off. Right? Those of you who weren't supposed to read your Bible three chapters a day so that you don't get you know, spanky, but the rest of you who has freedom to read your Bible, we're in December. Some of you, you know, make a New Year's resolution that I'm going to read through the Bible at least once this year. If you did make that commitment, where are you now? If you say, I'm going to read through the Bible this year, where are you? I mean, are you like almost a revelation? Jude? Or mm, this year was too difficult. It was pandemic time. Too many crazy things were happening. So I really didn't have time to read the Bible. Wow, tell that to the Lord Jesus Christ during judgment seat of Christ. I mean, that's no excuse for you and me. It only shows the lack of desire and passion and willingness and putting word of God number one in our life. For some, could live like that until Lord comes back, or until they die, live a backslidden life. But for others, who wants to get right with the Lord, who wants to be closer to the Lord, who wants to do something for the Lord, for what He has done for us, you change. I mean, change is something that people, how should I say, they don't like, right? Especially at work. If someone's been doing certain way for 20, 30 years, and some person comes or some process comes and goes, okay, there's a better process or newer way to do it, everybody's reluctant at first. But once they embrace it, Many, many times, they become better. You, on the other hand, you already know the answer. You know, that's, that's a funny thing about being a Christian. Because of through so many great preachings, Bible studies, you know, all the things, great things that you've heard, you already know the answer. But you and I need reminders. That's for sure. That's what preaching is for, to convict you, to convict your heart so that your behavior and life will change. That's why preaching is so important. It's not Bible study, per se. You do learn Bible, but through preaching, you want your life to be changed. I mean, with that kind of attitude, so many Bible believers drive hundreds and hundreds of miles to go to Bible conferences, you know, camps, so that they could listen to great preaching because they want those preachings to change their life. But when you come every time with that kind of mindset where Preaching is not for someone next to me. It's not for my... I mean, sometimes, you know, guilty as charged, right? Oh, man, that preaching is perfect for that person you know, in your mind because you know their faults, whether they're family members, whether they're close ones, or whether you've had some conflicts in the past and you're not at the best, you know, quote-unquote relationship, even though you're inside the church because people inside the church could hate each other more than anyone else outside the church. They're like, oh, man, that preaching is for that brother. That preaching is for that sister. Man, I'm so glad preacher preached that preaching, right? Those are the people who won't change because they don't think it's for them. Every word of God, you know, is perfect. When you listen to Bible believers preaching, it's for every one of us. And God has something in store for every single person, from young to old, everybody. And when you truly open your heart, and knowing that 
You're nothing but a wretched sinner on your way to hell, saved by grace of God through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then you open your heart, just like 1 Corinthians 11 says, you confess your sins, get right with the Lord, and you want to live godly for him. But until that step that you take, it's not going to happen. You're going to stay where you are or you're going to get worse. That's a guarantee. It, ask anybody. Ask yourself, especially if you've been saved for a long time. When you neglect your sins, when you don't do what you're supposed to do when it comes to reading the Bible, praying, and especially praying for others, uh, I think that's one thing that I have to park. How many of you guys actually pray for Pastor Shrive before this you know, physical ailment as your pastor on a daily basis? Because I believe that many of you guys pray for him on a daily basis now because of his you know, cancer. But how many of you guys did that before he got sick? I mean, don't raise your hand all at once, right? So you have to ask yourself. Do I really love the brethren? Do I love my pastor, pastor's wife, and, you know, our loved ones inside the church enough where I pray for them every single day? Or am I the type of person, oh, I'm in trouble. Please pray for me. Just me. And then you go home, you pray like one minute about yourself and your family only. Don't even care about anybody else, even though they're part of your body, right? We're all one body then how do you expect yourself to get out of that mutt, get yourself out of that backslidden stage? That's why it is so important that you judge yourself each day. Man, how, what kind of Christian have I been today? Was I, a, especially, you know, especially people like parents, but was I a good example to my kids today as a you know, Christian mother, Christian father? Man, Children, was I a good child as a Christian child to my mom and to my dad? Or like workers, was I a good Christian worker, example to my co-workers, even in a virtual setting, right? Or at school, was I a good Christian boy or girl to my classmates? No, I'm not going to lift Nathan up too much, but... When he doesn't cuss, that's different. Because everybody else cusses, especially in like a construction field. Say, if Timothy doesn't cuss, he's different. Literally, I was playing basketball, and then there were some high school kids playing on the other side. Every other word was a cuss word. Or literally, every other word. I mean, we're talking about this high school and junior high kids. All their, every other word is like blabbering these cuss words. If he doesn't do that, then he's different. There's something right with him. What about you? In your daily walk of life, are you different? You say, I want to overcome challenges in my life. Then you have to be different. You can't stay the same with the rest of the crowd. You have to be but one thing that I think many, many Christians lack. You have to be diligent. You can't be lazy. God cannot use lazy people. And you cannot succeed as a Christian or as in real life as a lazy person. You have to be diligent. Proverbs have so many verses about being diligent. Don't love sleep too much. You sleep what you need, right? And don't sleep too little either. It's going to hurt your body. You know, sleep like six to eight hours. That should be enough. You shouldn't be sleeping like 12 hours, 14 hours every single day, or take like five hour nap you know, after your work and go back to sleep. You know, if your body truly needs it, go ahead. But I, I believe that normal people don't need, you know, that extraordinary amount of sleep or else God wouldn't have put it in his word, you know, love not to sleep. So you have to be diligent. You have to read your Bible consistently. You have to pray consistently. You have to come to church consistently. You have to listen to good things. You know, there's so many bad things on YouTube or any other social media. There are so many good things as well. You know, Bible studies, you know, that 
Pastor Tribe, Pastor Kim, Pastor Kim, you know, and other our Bible believers out there. You know, spend your time in those things. Be diligent about it. You know, even at home, even at work, don't be the lazy worker. Don't be the lazy kid. You know, clean up your home, clean up your room, you know, do your best at work. As a Christian, you have to do best at everything. You have to live a balanced life. One thing that you and I can fall into a trap of, we do so well in our Christian things, say reading the Bible, praying, going to church, but if we neglect other things, such as schoolwork or work or anything other, then what happens? It becomes bad testimony. Then what happens? Instead of people who can get saved through your life, They'll be like, no, that's what Christians do. I don't want to be part of it. It's ultimately it's their fault, but you're a cause of it, part of the cause. So it's very important that you set up a diligent mind. You tell your flesh, your flesh does not want to be diligent. Your flesh just wants to lie on the bed or sit on the couch and play with the phone all day or whatever you want to do, eat all day, right? Or eat some good food, you know, like that. But you cannot. Let your flesh take over your life. How are you going to overcome challenges? How are you going to, you know, believe what the Bible says, right? I have so many verses, but, you know, another uh, last point is that, you know, for you to overcome challenges, not by only being saved, you know, not by always confessing your sins, getting right with the Lord, you have to heed to good counsel. Turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 11. We'll look at a few verses in Proverbs, and we'll finish. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. We're going to look at a few verses in the Proverbs. The Bible says, Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Let's go to chapter 12, verse 15, right next to it. Chapter 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Let's go to verse 15. Uh, chapter 15, verse 22. Chapter 15, verse 22. Chapter 15, verse 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. And lastly, chapter 19, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20. Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy letter N. As you can see, one of the other ways to overcome challenges is by heeding listening to counsel. You know, there are people who have more experience than you, especially in Christian walk. That's why you have like pastors. That's why you have teachers. And through their preaching, you know, through one-on-one -on -one talk or whatnot, you can get some good advice in your life, right? Or you don't seek it at all, or you seek it, but you don't listen to it, then what happens? You're going to fail. That's why in Romans chapter 5, experience is very important. That's why people who have gone through before you, as much as you don't want to listen to your parents, your young kids, you have to listen to them because they went through it before and they have experience. That's why if you do have questions, whether it's, you know, Christian walk or in general, Sometimes you don't have the answers. In order to get the answers, you go to the people that God uses. Don't go to psychic next door or on the street. You're not going to find the right answers. There are options out there. You go to Bible believing. That's what, that's, that's what pastor job is really hard. But it's one of the great rewarding things too. You could lead the ships, right? And then why don't you go to them, right? Ask before you make the wrong decision in your life. As Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? As a saved Christian, 
you have so much privilege in your life, opportunity that none say people can ever even dream of. But that's not the end. You have, you, have, you have to overcome challenges. And in order to do that, you have to check your sins every day. You have to get closer to the Lord. And just always think about your spiritual state. You know, when people go on a diet, I'll finish with this. If they really do want to lose some weight, they constantly check their weight. Constantly check their calories. If they want to gain weight like some people or get buff like some people, they constantly check themselves in the mirror. They constantly check the weights. They, they even have a chart. As a Christian, you have to check yourself every single day.